Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today is going to be part one of a three-part series. We wanted to do a makeover in the downstairs family room as well as the little kitchenette we have here over on the side. But we wanted to start with wrapping this beam and just give a more in-depth explanation of how to do this and how to wrap any kind of existing post or beam and make it look like you have a realistic beam. When we redid our kitchen upstairs, we had to move where the sink was at, so they had to redo our plumbing. They also forgot the water line, so they came down and cut different holes, trying to find where it was at, and they ended up cutting a bunch of holes. And I've never known what we should do here, and Ashley was like, dude, let's just wrap the beam, because I don't know the first thing about moving any of this. So the best way to do it, instead of having to move it, is just hide it. So we're gonna do a little faux beam here and see how it works out. To wrap this specific beam, it was over 14 feet long. So we went to a lumber yard to get our wood instead of going to Lowe's or Home Depot like we typically do, just because they didn't have that size. But here Thomas is cutting each of the pieces of wood at 14 feet. I'm going to mark each one of these as A, B, and then C, because I'm gonna be working from left to right. So this is the left side of the beam. This is underneath the beam. That's the far right side. The first thing he's doing is securing it with some wood glue, and then he's going to pinnell it together. Now, if you already have an existing beam or a post, you can easily just wrap it as you go, and you don't have to build it like he is doing here. However, he thought it would be easier for him to build it out here just because he didn't want to make a crazy mess in our downstairs when it comes to sanding it and scuffing it up that kind of gets wood and dust to go everywhere so if you're doing this indoor you might want to consider building the entire thing outside and then just securing it to the existing post otherwise it is a little bit easier to just build it as you go The next thing he's doing is just filling all of the holes with some wood filler. A way to make your beam look real is you wanna ding it up and mark it up a little bit. Not like going overboard and putting holes in it, but I'm gonna take my grinder and lightly go through it. There's not gonna really be a rhyme or reason to it. Like I won't evenly space the dings apart. I'm just gonna kinda of go wild on it and mark it up enough to where it's noticeable and it's gonna look different when you stain it. It gives it that old real beam look and the reclaimed look. So I'm just gonna go through, mark it up, and then I'll lightly sand it down a little bit to take those markings and make sure there's no slivers in them at all.
After he scuffed it up with his grinder, he's now going over and sanding it down. And one trick that makes it look the most realistic, I think, is when you round the edges off. If you have really square edges, it looks like you just wrapped it with wood. But if you round the edges out, it really does make the beam look more realistic. Make something clear first, real quick. This is day two. <laughs> Outfit number one of day two, so I'm not changing. This is all done over the span of multiple days. I'll just like to make that clear. <laughs> I don't change my clothes six times a day. <laughs> After completing the top portion of the beam, Thomas actually decided to wrap the rest of it just inside, and it went a lot faster. I think that this took him about five minutes to do, whereas the top portion of the beam took all day. We tried to contain the dust as much as we could, and it really wasn't too bad. I think he's still glad that he did the majority of it outside. But again, this is just kind of preference. You can build it however you want, but it will go a little bit quicker just wrapping it as you go. The color stain we chose is this Golden Oak by Verithane, and we just picked this up at Ace Hardware. You might be wondering what this extra piece of wood is doing on the ceiling. These holes were still not covered, even with how big we made this beam and there was a huge obnoxious hole at the very end of the beam and we just really wanted to get all of those holes covered. So we did what we thought would be best to cover these holes and I think it looks fine. Obviously I would have preferred if we just could have put the beam up without any extra pieces of wood on the side, but for the problem we were dealing with, I think that this turned out really well. I know some of these after shots are not going to be the very best because I didn't want to give the whole room reveal during this video since this is the first one going up in this series. So stay tuned for the next two videos because you'll see the beam a lot better. But I did want to give just a couple up close shots of the beam so you can see what a difference it made by wrapping this beam in our basement. Okay guys, well that's everything for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have not yet hit that red subscribe button, make sure you do that, especially if you don't wanna miss out on the other two videos in this series. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.